Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to another edition of Mac Ray Studio. And today we're going to be talking about cars along a path and road, less traveled. Or... You didn't introduce me. Oh. <laughs> Well, I just figured everybody knows you by now after about the 167th All right. episode. All right. This is Mark Spencer, everyone, in case you didn't know. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, we're going to, well, it, here's the deal. So I have this new tutorial out about shapes and paint and masks and everything. Right. So I thought I'd show a really cool way to use uh, shapes and paint strokes and sort of a useful example. Right. So we have a project here that has in it already just a color solid generator from Motion's library. As a background. As a background, uh, or maybe the ground. Uh, and then we have this car from I stockphoto.com, which you could actually draw this with shapes, but it'd be a little... <laughs> that would take a long time yeah, not, to draw Not enough that. time to do that today, right. so we're going to use that guy. We're going to draw a car and, in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'm actually going to turn that off. I want to animate this car along a road. I'm going to draw the road. First thing I'm going to do is hold down Command and Spacebar and drag left to make a little more room. By the way, if you try that at home with Command, Spacebar, and dragging, and it doesn't work, it's because you have Spotlight enabled. So you need to disable that shortcut. How many times are you going to have to tell them that? I know, I know. So now I'm going to use um, not this paint stroke tool, and one of the key things to get is you don't need this paint stroke tool to uh, draw paint strokes. I'm just going to use this Bezier tool. And if you've ever used the pen tool in Photoshop, you know what the Bezier tool is. The Bezier tool. The Bezier. So before I draw, I have some options. I can change the color. I'm going to make it black because it's going to be a road. I can change how thick it is. But I can change these afterwards, too. So that'll give me a starting point. And I'm just going to draw kind of a, um, a little curving line here uh, on my canvas. Yeah, it looks like Seg. And now I'm going to hit, it looks like what? Sega or Segway or wherever that road is, up that racetrack. And oh, Laguna Seca. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Laguna yeah. Seca. So I'm going to hit return, and that um, attempts to close it. Notice I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> it looks crazy now, right? It does. And I didn't actually click the first point, which would create a closed path. Mm -hmm. I just hit return, which leaves it as an open path, but the fill is turned on by default. So I'm going to turn off the fill. I'm just going to stroke. Yeah, and I just have the stroke now. I want it to be black, so I'm just going to drag that little color chip from there to there to make it black. Nice. Okay? I want to make it wider, but in the HUD I can only go up to 100, which is not far enough. And as folks may know by now, if you go to the inspector... Which is gives you a lot more... A lot more options, yeah. So here I'm going to make it... I'm just going to crank up the width. So I have a nice thick road going on here. I hit Shift S to get back to my regular tool. Shift Z to fill the window, okay? So now I have this road, and I can change the shape of it anytime I want by right-clicking on it, choosing Edit Points, and then I can manipulate this path uh, to, you know, to look different if I, if I want to. So I'm going to hit Shift S to get out of that. Now, I want uh, dotted lines to go along it. Right, the, um, the spider lanes, the little stripe, the yeah. broken white dotted lines. Exactly. And so I'm going to use a replicator to do that. But first, I'm going to use another shape. So I'm going to use this rectangle tool right down here. The rectangle tool, letter R, we'll select it. And uh, this one, I want to be white. So I'm going to uh, make this white. And just a little white filled rectangle you're creating. A little, right? little guy like that. That's going to be my little stripe, okay? okay? I'll hit escape to get out of that tool. And now I'm going to hit the letter L. Or you could click this little uh, uh, replicate button at the bottom corner here, and a little hard to see. Uh, that will allow you to make a replicate, to replicate objects, create replicator. So we'll do that, and it creates a bunch of copies. Now, here's something that's really kind of cool. By default, you get this. Um, layout, if we look in the heads-up display, the shape is a rectangle. If I click that pop-up menu, we could make a circle, uh, or we could make this thing called a burst or a spiral. But the How about thing, a line? Uh, a line, you know, not too exciting, but just, yeah. you know, there, there's a line of, of these guys. Yeah. Actually, a lot you can do with that. But I'm interested in is this shape called image. And the thing that you need to know in motion, if it says image in one of these pop-up menus for a shape source, I mean, for, for shape source, what it means is a shape. In other words, the motion object of a shape. You can't just put anything in there. I'm sorry. I just totally lied to you. Okay? You, you, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Um, you could draw a shape in there, but I'm interested in geometry. Okay, so I'm interested in geometry. we're not even going to talk about image right yeah. now. That's for so, another, another session. Back that up. Uh, we, we'll get to that later, but we're going to choose geometry. When it says geometry, you might remember, well, geometry? What is geometry? What do you mean? Well, that means that it's looking for in this sh shape source well, uh, it's looking for a shape. I'm saying another shape. 
Yeah, to be the to be the the, the source. source along which these little stripes will be replicated. So in this case, I want my road. So I'm going to drag. I'm going to actually rename this road so we know what it is. Yeah, initial go, path. Go back to my replicator, mm -hmm. and I'm going to drag that road into the shape source well. And now let's let's kind of move these over because so we can see them. Um, we need more points. And it still doesn't look much like it, but it's getting pretty close, right? Kind of looks like it's oriented the wrong direction. Yeah. So I'm going to go over to the uh, replicator in the inspector here, and um, let's move this over a little bit so it gets lined up correctly. I'm going to change the angle. Ah. So here's where I can change the angle, and you nice. be like, "Well, that's sort of nice, but not exactly what we want, right? We want them to curve along the road." Yeah, you're right. That so looks odd. we're almost there, but there's this great uh, align angle checkbox. Okay. And by clicking it'll that, align, align it to the angle of the path. Yeah, it'll go to the path. So now these little guys will curve. Each individual one doesn't curve. They're each straight, but now they'll bend along the path. Let's also scale them down because they're a little bit big. Yes. And That's like a slot car track now. Yeah. And let's increase the number of points. Nice. Okay. And there we have our nice little road. Okay. The cool thing about this is because I used a replicator, because I could have actually used a shape here to do this, but because I used a replicator, if I go back to the original road, right click and go to edit points, and if I change this road in any way, I'll just shorten that up there, shift S, and I'll move the playhead a little bit. You had to update it by moving the playhead? You do. You have to move the playhead for ah, it to update. Gotcha. But the replicator jumps into uh, that position and now matches it. So any changes that you make to the road, the stripes automatically follow, okay? So um, that's the first part. And then finally, what I want to do is take this car and, and animate anim it along the road. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit uh, Command, Shift, Which Right brings Bracket. It to the front. Bring it up to the top. It's a little big for a little road, so I'm going to move them down, make it a little smaller. And now to animate this guy, I'm actually going to use this whole idea of a shape source again. So first, I'm going to go to the Behaviors button in the toolbar here and choose Basic Motion, Motion Path. Ah, and you're going to okay. use the shape, road shape as your motion path. Yes, yes. By default, the motion path it sort of goes off. If we play this, the car just kind of <laughs> goes off the side. We don't really want that. Path. But check it out. In the heads-up display, there's a path shape for the motion path. Now, you could actually take this motion path, and you, could, you can manipulate it. You can add control points. I just option clicked on it. So you can change this path to, you know, you could manually change it. But why? We don't need this to. pop-up. Right. Use this pop-up menu. Go to geometry. Drag in, let's move this down. And we're back to the geometry. Okay. Yep, drag in the road. And now this car we'll will move exactly along the path. Ah. Okay, it doesn't look quite right though, does it? No. Nope. Very close. So um, one thing, it's oriented in the wrong direction. So we could take it and, you know, turn it like that. But so it's I, still going to be oriented that way when it gets to the curve. Yeah, it's, it's not turning. You want to have it orient to the path. You want it to be aligned, aligned right? So, so in this case, there's a behavior for that. So if I go back to the behaviors pop-up menu here, in addition, in under basic motion, where we had motion path, right. there is snap alignment to motion. Ah. So if I choose that, um, and now I need to kind of play with the rotation to get it to point in the right direction. X, Y, Z, vertical. Sometimes you have to kind of play it. There we go. Okay, so now <laughs> if you kind of like play which is the right one, vertical or horizontal. But now that car moves along the path. Uh, Look at that. The whole way. And in fact, if you wanted to go faster, you could take this motion path and just trim it to. I see that the, the, the behavior itself determines the speed. The how long it is, yeah. Right. So now it really zips along the path. Now, just one final thing, because you might look at it's, it's kind of cool. That's, that's kind of cool. Now, that's one it. thing is the car is right in the middle. Right. Okay. And like, how could I offset it? Because he's, you know, there's going to be a collision if we have a car going the other direction. Sure. But check this out. This is really cool. I'm going to select the car. I'm going to right click. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to right click on it and choose the anchor point. Ah, so okay. Because I, I don't want to move the path. Because if I shifted it down, it's going to shift it off incorrectly right. in another place. But if I use the anchor point, I can offset the car from the path. So I'm just dragging the anchor point there. So I'm going to go back to the regular transform tool. Let me move back out and go back to the beginning. I'll deselect everything and play that. And now the car stays <laughs> along the, the uh, in this case, the wrong side of the road, unless we're in England. So That's let's, right. let's say this is, this is for you English audience here, right here. Or Australia, do they do the left uh, side of the road? No. In Australia too? 
I don't know. I haven't been. I, think, I don't think so. I think it's just... But you can see how you can offset it so it goes where you want. And the last thing I might want to do on this that motion path behavior... out of the... Oh, wait, that's on the... No, I'm not... Uh, yeah, we Sorry. were out of time for that. But um, in terms of the speed of the car, notice as it comes to the, to the corners, it seems to kind of speed up through those. It's actually not speeding up, but it kind of looks like it. But in the heads-up display, if you have the motion path behavior selected, there's a speed pop-up menu, and there's an option called natural. And if I choose that, it'll actually slow the car down a little bit in the curves like a car might really do. You know what's really amazing about motion to me? The fact that you can just accomplish all of this with behaviors. Uh, a couple of shapes a couple of shapes and, and a couple of behaviors, right? Behaviors. So really for knocking out quick animations to, for you know, infographics, whatever, it, motion really is powerful. It's super fast. Plus, now, now it's because everything is tied to that one shape, we have that one road shape. If I go to edit the points of that shape and do anything I want to to that shape, um, yeah, I'll get there. I'll get there. So I can just do something like that. And not only oh will the stripes gosh, update, that is great. The, uh, the, car, the car will update its path as well. Of course, in this case, we probably want a few fewer. Uh, it can't automatically say, hey, I want fewer points on there. We can drop down the number of points. But the point is, they're all tied together based on one shape. That's, that's really great. And so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just wanted one last thing. I'm not going to do it here, but if you add a camera, and uh, a match move behavior to the camera to match the movement of the car. You could do something like this, where the camera follows the motion of the car along the path. Oh, that's okay. That's so all really I did here sweet. is I threw a camera in. I added a match move behavior to the camera, and I said, "Follow the car." And now we have this nice animation where the camera moves right along with the car. So you could stop the car at certain points and have some text come on, or it's like a what you want to do. Shot. Exactly. So, you just finished a couple of new tutorials. You actually did a tutorial on motion and a tutorial on cam um, animating the camera and a tutorial on shapes. Yeah, so there's one on mastering the motion's camera, but there's also one on shapes, paint strokes, and masks, uh, mastering those things in Motion 5 at rippletraining.com. That's right. So if you need to learn how to animate a car along the path or at least understand the fundamentals of, of, of what he just talked about, excellent tutorials, highly recommended. And I want to thank you for watching another episode of Matt Breaks Studio.